Sairam. Having seen the position of this D block elements, we should now see what are its special characters or what are its properties in itself. And we have seen in the study of chemistry that properties and positions mainly depend on something called as electronic configuration. What is electronic configuration? We have a segment called as orbits and orbitals. Depending on where the electron moves, we have this prophecy of electronic configuration. So let us see what is the electronic configuration of this uh, D block elements. First thing when we want to talk about electronic configuration, we need to tell its general configuration. And the general configuration happens to be n minus 1 d 1 to 10 n s 1 to 2. What is this? See, whenever we write for s orbitals, we write it as n s 1 to 2. This is something that has been already studied in first year. When we write for p block, we write it as n p 1 to 6. Now this is because in the periodic table you must have observed that there are two periods or two groups of S which is there, six groups of P which is there. Now what does this 1 to 10 indicate is, it indicates that there are in total 10 groups of D orbitals. And where is that present? We already seen in the position that this D orbitals are present between third group and twelfth group which indicates that we have in total 10 groups. And when does this third group and 10th group, uh, this 12th group starts? It only starts after its S orbital has been filled completely. So what are the conditions here? Supposing if I take the example of scandium, scandium atomic number is 21. When I write the electronic configuration, I go as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, this completes 18 electrons. Now for the remaining 3 electrons, I am going to take it as 4s2, 3d1, which indicates that filling of d orbital is only after 4s orbital. So therefore, this general configuration when we write n minus 1, d1 to 10, this is only done after we fill ns orbital. And generally we believe that uh, the earlier orbit should be completed before we go to the next one. Just remembering some rules from first year of Bob principle, Hunt's rule, all those when we apply, we know that we have to complete the earlier one and go. But then why is it that NS is written as 1 to 2? This indicates that there could be some exceptions which could be followed. So what are those? Let us see. In this part now, a diagrammatic view of the orbitals 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. All you need to know is just the diagrammatic form of it, not much of general explanation. In this, this yellow colored ones which are shown are indicative of s orbital. Blue colored ones shown are indicative of p. Green colored are indicated of d and this reddish colored is indicated of f. We know very well that in S there is only one orbital present. This is something that we have studied in the earlier classes where S has only one orbital. P has three orbitals where we can write it as Px, Py and Pz. This is something that you have come across in structure of atom chapter of first year. Then when we go to D orbitals, D actually has 5 orbitals. Which are those 5? Dxy, Dyz, Dzx, Dx square minus Y square, Dz square. And that is why these are the 5 orbitals that we come. And F has 7. What is this telling is, this is the increasing energy axis. And what it tells is, energy of 1s is lesser than 2s which is further lesser than 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. Now we know the rule called as n plus l rule. What is this n plus l? n indicates the principal quantum number, l indicates the azimuthal quantum number which is there. So according to this n plus l rule, we fill this energy gas where when we consider for say as an example 3p, 4s and 3d, 
what is the n plus l value for 3p we know very well that s orbital the value is 0 l value for p orbital it is 1 for d orbital it is 2 so what is the n plus l value for 3p it is 3 plus 1 here it is 4 plus 0 whereas here it is 3 plus 2 3 is whatever is written here and d is equivalent to 2 this is the part of the structure of atom what are the total values now 4 4 5 and we know that whenever we fill we are to fill in higher increasing values and if there is a tie as we see in these two cases there is a tie between 4 and 4 whenever there is a tie we go for lower values of n the n value here is 3 the n value here is 4 so because of this lower values of n this is how the filling takes place and therefore 4s has to be first filled before 3d if you remember in the earlier segment we had asked that even though there is a fourth period available we get 3d in that fourth period the reason is this because electrons while filling will fill first 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p then they will fill 4s and after that they will go on to fill 3d this is why the filling of our electrons in the system is given according to the parts which are there in this cases so this is an application of this n plus l rule which we had it in the first year to be applied in this cases moving further now we will see certain applicable this electronic configurations of certain elements which are there given here so what is the configuration that are given here as i already explained for scandium in the earlier case you have 1s2 2s2 2p6 then 3s2 3p6 3d1 4s2 though the filling of 4s is before 3d we still write 4s after 3d why is it so because when we write the configuration we are actually talking about the presence of electrons in an atomic orbital for example just to elaborate this part if i have to take this part here i have a nucleus at the center when i consider the presence of nucleus this is a nucleus along this nucleus i will have the first orbit remember in this first orbit there is 1s shell then i will have the second orbit which is 2s and 2p shell i can have then in the third orbit i am going to run in with 3s 3p and then 3d the fourth orbit which is going to come in picture will have 4s 4p 4d 4f now in these cases the filling is governed by the rules of Aufbau principle hunt's rule pauli's exclusion principle and all where we understand that the filling of electrons after 3p will go to 4s and then it will come to 3d but the presence of electron will be in such a way that 3d electrons will be inside 4s electrons will be outside so whenever you write an electronic configuration while writing we write 3d before writing 4s but filling of electrons will always be in the form of 4s and then coming to 3d so moving back to what we have been discussing here regarding the electronic configuration we have for scandium we have it as a this then similarly as you go further you will see that for titanium it is 3d2 all other things are remaining same just the d electron is increasing because this being a d block element the differentiating electron will enter into the d orbital what is the differentiating electron the last electron that you prefer so here there is a continuous increase in d block element so 3d1 3d2 3d3 the next one should have been 3d4 but you see that there is a change from our normal ruling that is considered instead of writing it as 3d4 4s2 they have written it as 3d5 4s1 is it a case of exception let us see further but for now let us move further so this should have been 3d4 4s2 but uh, actually practically it is shown like this what about the next one this is coming back to 4s2 3d5 3d6 3d7 3d8 after 3d8 you should have had 3d9 but suddenly it shows 3d10 without 3d9 where 
there is a decrease of one electron in 4s also. Which means that probably these two are a sort of exception of the generalization that we do. What is the generalization? There should be one electron added to every d orbital. But in the case of chromium and copper, we see a slight variation from the generalization that we undertake. Why is this so? That we will have to study. So let us see what is this generalization and what is the exception that has been given up here. So this exception part which is there for copper as well as chromium is because of a concept of half filled orbitals and fully filled orbitals. We have seen in earlier segments that the stability is governed by three different schemes. One is if a system attains noble gas configuration. Say it should attain a configuration of helium, argon, neon, all those configurations will give you stability. If that is not there, then either you should have a half filled system which can offer you stability or you should have a fully filled system which can offer you a stability in these cases. So what we see here is that in the case of copper and chromium which has been present here, we see that the energy of this 3d orbital and 4s orbital which they have depicted here as uh, n minus 1d and ns. In our discussion it is 3d and this is 4s. These energies are almost similar when we see it in the electronic configuration the energy parts will be similar. So to obtain such half filled condition instead of having for say chromium, instead of having it as 3d4, 4s2, it is seen that one of the electron from 4s jumps to 3d because of lesser energy gap. Why does it do so is because it can obtain 3d5, 4s1 which is a half filled stable compound. Therefore, this tends to show an exception in the cases. Similar is the case with copper. Copper atomic number is 29 you should have actually had it as 3d9 4s2. But because there is a possibility that if one electron jumps to 3d orbital, it can show a stability of fully filled stable orbitals. Therefore, for that reason, there is a jump of electron from 4s to 3d and copper shows 3d10 4s1. Now the question that we may ask is, why not for other elements say like vanadium? Now vanadium which is present actually has a configuration of 3d3, 4s2. We may ask why not jump two electrons from this and make it like 3d5, 4s0 and uh, say that it is stable because this is also half filled stable. See jumping one electron is easy. To jump two more electrons it will require maximum high amount of energy which will be difficult. So therefore this possibility is not seen therefore when you see the vanadium configuration it is still at 3d3 4s2 whereas for chromium and copper there is an exceptional case which has been seen. So this in a diagrammatic form we can just understand where we can show it like this where this was the expected configuration should have been 3d4 4s2 this is how it should have been. but the uh, actual configuration is one of the electron from 4s is jumping to 3d orbital where a half filled every orbital is singly filled and this is a stable form. Similarly for copper as explained this is a diagrammatic view of it it should have been 3d4 4s2 expected configuration but because if when one electron jumps from 4s to 3d you can get a state of fully filled d orbitals and therefore it has the configuration of the copper which has been present as 3d 10 4s1. So these are certain exceptions that we see in case of chromium and copper. Now moving forward from these exceptional cases which we have seen we will now see the electronic configuration of various 3D elements which are there. You must have realized by now that though we are discussing this chapter of D block elements, our main focus is going to be on 3D series which is from scandium to zinc. This series is going to be our focus and considering this as a base, we will study certain general properties of other elements. 
So let us go through the configuration here. Uh, various uh, atoms are written here. Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. These are the atomic numbers which have been present. And an electronic configuration of all these segments is given. First aspect. We already have seen the electronic configuration of all these elements 3D1, 4S2, 3D2, 4S2. We have all also understood why there is a change in configuration pattern for chromium as well as copper because of half filled and fully filled stabilities. Now in this segment what we are going to study is what about the M plus? What does this M plus indicate? It indicates that see whenever you hold a positive charge for example we have seen that Sodium is a metal. If I remove an electron from sodium, I am going to write it as Na+. Similarly, chlorine is a non-metal. For non-metals, we add an electron and we write it as Cl-. So now in this case, when we see, M plus indicates removal of one electron. And please go through this entire part. You will realize that the electron is not removed from 3D's parts but they are naturally removed from 4S. So the first electron that goes will not go from 3D, it will go from 4S. See, filling is based on increasing energies. It follows N plus L rule and other rules. But removing out, you always remove out from outside. When you see the uh, nuclear parts of this, if this is the nucleus, first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, and then the fourth orbit, Remember that 4S is present outside. So before you dig in for 3D, first you need to get the people who are outside. And that is why when we say M plus condition, there is one electron reduction from M to M plus and that reduction is seen in the case of 4S orbitals. Here the 4S1 which was there became 4S0. Similarly, in the further parts also you'll see that one electron each is decreasing in these cases. What does M plus 2 indicates? Removal of two electrons and that also has to be first removed from outside and then you can go inside. So seeing these parts here, two two electrons from all these cases are removed when you see a comparison between M and M plus 2, you can see that two electrons from the original configuration is removed. What about M plus 3? It is written as AR. What is AR? AR is argon. Scandium having an atomic number 21. If you remove three electrons from that, which indicates two from 4S, one from 4, from 3D, you will get back to noble gas configuration, which is nothing but argon. Similar set of things are seen further here as you go forward. You can see that electrons are continuously being removed in these cases. Now the question is why have they put a hyphen mark in the case of uh, copper as well as zinc. This is done so because practically they could not remove three electrons from copper and zinc. Theoretically we can write it say according to this we can write it as 3D8 and 3D9. But zinc is a stable metal and once the stability is obtained to remove an electron from a stable system is very difficult. And in this case also, copper is generally seen to show just plus 1 and plus 2 oxidation states. We do not get oxidation states of plus 3. Therefore, these configurations are seen for metals as well as its corresponding ions. It can be plus 1 state, plus 2 state and plus 3 state. So these are certain general electronic configurations that we come across for various metals. Now we'll come across something called as transition elements. Uh, we have actually gone through this part. What is a transition element? These are nothing but D and F block elements. Why are they called as transition elements? Because in the periodic table on one side you had S block. On the other side you had P block. S block showed high metallic properties. P block showed non-metallic properties. So all these D block elements which are present in between D and F showed a reducing metallic forms and therefore we call them as transition elements. But what is the definition of transition elements? Transition elements are those which have incompletely filled D orbitals. Remember that D orbital can have five different types. So each orbital can have two electrons. So the maximum capacity is D10. 
So if it has a D10, then it is not a transition. It is part of D block elements, but it is not a transition material. So what they say here, a transition element is defined as the one which has incompletely filled D orbitals, where either it can be the ground state or it can be any one of its oxidation states. We have seen just now that elements can have plus one, plus two, plus three oxidation states. So in any one of these cases, if it has an incompletely filled D orbital, which indicates from D1 to D9, then you can classify these elements as transition elements. So if we go strictly by this definition, we now realize that zinc, cadmium and mercury, they can't be considered as D block elements because if you see the configuration of zinc, it is 3D10, 4S2. Zinc does not show stability in plus one state, it shows stability in plus two state. And when I say plus two state, it means just 4D, 3D10, 4S0 because two electrons are removed from 4S. So you realize that in its elemental state also it is completely filled. In its oxidation state also it is completely filled. And from the earlier table we also got to know that plus three state for zinc is not available. So therefore, these three elements which are actually part of 3D series, 4D series and 5D series, these do not come under the classification of transition elements. They are part of D block, but we do not call them as transition elements. So this is regarding the concept of transition elements and its uh, application. So just as a revision part, we have here a tabular form where 3D series which is there, 4s orbital, 3d orbital, we can see certain exceptions in chromium and copper which we have dif discussed now number of times. These are the exceptions that we are able to see in the electronic configuration. So we have mainly discussed about 3d series. What about the other d series that we have? So other d series just I'm going to tabulate these parts whereas in these you can see maximum number of exceptions. Just go through these parts, you will see that many a places there are exceptions which are shown here. You can see here 1, 1, 1 they have taken, in fact they have taken here 0. So why these exceptions are there? That is because as the size goes on increases, with an increase in size, what we see here is the attraction of the nucleus. Nucleus is at the center. As the size has increased, which means that the electron is now very far away, the attraction towards nucleus is reduced, so they can show many more such exceptions which are there. See, when you are near, there is maximum attraction. You cannot move around. You have to follow the rules. Go a little far, you realize that there are not many people to see you. In the same way, the attraction from the nucleus as you go far away will be reduced and therefore they do not show proper stabilities and many exceptions are there. As conveyed to you, our study is going to be restricted to D block elements only and in that specially 3D elements. So seeing these general configurations which are being present, what are certain properties that these compounds are going to show? Every single property of this we are going to study extensively where we have very variety of oxidation states. For say copper, you have plus one and plus two. Why it is so? Will come up in the next segments. For elements like iron, it is plus two, plus three. So there are various oxidation states. That is because in D block, they do not go directly to noble gas configuration. They try to stabilize in their own way. Formation of colored ions, many compounds are colored. Manganese, we have chromium, we have iron colored compound. So a lot of colored compounds are there. Complex formation with a variety of ligands. The concept of ligands will be dealt in the next chapter that is coordination compounds. But that coordination compounds chapter takes the basics from this chapter. So the application of this will be studied in the next chapter which has been present. Catalytic property, we have used many catalysts as an example already. I told you nickel, palladium, platinum which were there in the 3D elements where these catalysts we have already used in the organic synthesis. Paramagnetic property, which essentially means that it shows magnetism behavior. These compounds show good amount of magnetism behavior and why do they show magnetism behavior? What are its properties? Individually, we'll be studying them through this chapter. 
So this is all that I have for you in this segment where in the further segments we will see much more deeper study of this 3D elements. Thank you. Sairam.